All right, guys, thanks for joining us today. We're here at Spring Loaded up at Sandstone Point at Bribey Island. Um, there's been a couple of bands play already today, but the highlight of the day, undoubtedly, so far has been Body Jar, and we're lucky enough to have Cam here speaking with us. Cam, thank you. No worries. You're far too kind. Look. Well, there has only been two bands played today, mate. So, <laughs> but See, we're on far. top. We're on top. There you go. <laughs> so, how was it out there, bro? Like, you've had a lot of energy out there. It, yeah, it sounded was good. good. It was good. It was an early one for us. I think we played at two fifteen, which, which is like, you know, it feels like about nine in the morning when you've just gotten off a flight. But it was good. I, I dug it. We had Adelita from Magic Dirt get up and sing a song with us, and um, the crowd was, you know, singing along. So, what more? What more could you ask, really? Nice setting here too, beautiful beach. Beautiful, isn't it? Nice little vibe going on. We've got cram in the tree. I don't know if the camera can see it. Oh, really? The the spider bait. Oh, I see. Yeah, (laughs) The dangerous redback, which I read the other day. No one has died from a redback bite for over 40 years. My mother actually got bitten by a redback once and it died. Yeah. Yeah. True story. She had that much scotch in her system, it crawled away and died. Yeah, right. I'm surprised. (laughs) surprised. Most most animals that bite your family end up dying. True. My dad got bitten by a tiger snake and it died. All the fish in (laughs) Bali, when they ate your feet, they died. The dog next door to us got bitten by a tiger snake and died, but my cat got bitten by a brown snake on the head and survived. On the head. And then killed the snake, (laughs) ripped ripped its head off and left it on my doorstep. You need to tell me your cat's name. Bluey. Bluey, and the it was legend. Bluey this one's for you, Bluey. Before Way the before the cartoon. Before the cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got to ask you, Cam, like, playing a day gig like you did today, like, is it, is it much different for you than playing? Like, at night time, you can't really see the people's faces uh, out there. Now, now you look at them, you can see them yes, looking back at yeah, you. Yeah, true. Yeah, you can see everyone, which is great. But the nighttime vibe is just a bit better, I reckon. That's just when I, I just imagine rock and roll, punk rock, whatever, just at night time. And during the day, it feels a bit raw, but hey. It's good because you get it over and done with and you can watch some other bands. <laughs> True. You know what I mean? I guess now I can you know, go and see Magic Dirt, go and see Shehad and you know, enjoy the night. Whereas if we were playing really late, I'd be probably really nervous at the moment. You know, but I'm also a bit more relaxed. So. Yeah, it's, it's a blessing and a curse. Kind of true. Get it done nice and quick so we can have some beers after yeah, and watch the rest yeah. of the bands. Yeah, like that sometimes. And you notice we've set up right next to the beer tent too, just, just for... Um... Fantastic. <laughs> we made sure the camera couldn't see that. <laughs> it's a nice little vibe. It is, man. So how, how good are festivals for like Spring Loader, though, bro? Like all Australian bands showcasing Australian yeah. talent. It's like nearly like a home bake kind of lineup, I was mm. thinking, you know. Yeah, it's awesome, man. We get them every now and then. Hotter Than Hell was like that, you know, with all Aussie sort of lineups. And, um, yeah, I'm really happy just to be included with the bands that we're playing with, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm stoked. With all the bands that you're playing with, um, who are you actually most ex- stoked to see tonight now that you've finished know. playing? Because it, to me, this lineup's pretty good for me. Scream Feeder, who opened, I used to be, you know, I used to go to all their shows. I love them. But I love Adelita and Magic Dirt, so I want to watch them. She had, probably she had, because I bought that album General Electric three times. I bought it on CD and I was in the share house, someone nicked it, so I bought it again. Then I left it at my own 30th, and my 30th birthday party. And then I bought it on vinyl and then I bought a download, so I bought it four times. So I reckon I probably like she had more than any other band on the bill. Being, being spoiled for choice with um, all of our favourite bands and genres around us. You've been around for that long. You've obviously seen genres and, and generations come in and out. What is a genre that you just can't wrap your head around? It's a really good question. Um, the, the TikTok sort of thing has got me stumped because I've got yep. an eight-year-old she's really into that. But kids only know like 15 seconds of songs at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they'll go see a band, but they only know 15. Back in my day, we knew at least three songs, you know, or, or we had the album. Or, but now they go see a band and they only know like a little tiny little bit, you know, they go mental for that bit. So the whole TikTok thing is hard for me to get my head around because it, it seems like it's, um, it makes kids' attention spans a lot smaller. A lot worse than what they already are. <laughs> yeah, I encourage my kids to listen to the whole album. I go, has she got an album? Why don't you listen to the whole album? Yeah. Yeah. You probably Let's find something like, cool. Every song doesn't need to have a video with a dance routine, you know. I, yeah, so. I always found growing up that you'd end up hating the song that you liked the band originally and like the B-side or the end of the album, you'd find that one and you'd always skip that yeah, first song. Yeah, totally, because it, you just wear it out. And yeah, it you're like, I'm, so you I'm done. Yeah. You go a bit deeper yeah. into the album, you know. Yeah, no, totally. Track 11's where it's at, bro, skip yeah, this yeah. one. <laughs> totally, man. I mean, uh, yeah, every band I listen to, I totally agree. So over, over all the years, right, and you, you think back to all, all the albums, is there a, a general time in your life that if you could, you'd jump back to? 
and relive again? Is it any of the albums? Which one would, would you uh, want to jump back into? Of our own or someone else's? Of your, of your own or someone else's, whatever, um, both? I, I guess, you know, when you're in your sort of mid-twenties sort of thing and you're just firing on all cylinders, you've got so much energy and, and you know, so much enthusiasm and no, no real sort of uh, nothing to tie you down. I think that it's a magical time in your life. You know, we, we did... So anyway, after all the years and all the albums, <laughs> yeah, yeah. which which one would you relive when you're in your twenties? You toured with Blink One Eighty Two. Yeah, when I was twenty five, and you know, you just got a lot of enthusiasm and nothing, sort of nothing to tie you down. Yeah, so, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I had a little chuckle of a one liner today because there's obviously a couple of technical difficulties, but I thought to myself, who need who needs the front of house when the entire crowd is singing all the words to your song? With that, do you have a favourite type of fan, especially now that you've uh, got to play for the daytime fans as well as the vampires? A favourite type of band? Yeah, or what, what's your favourite fan? What's your favourite type of fan? You can't like say oh. fan or pedestal fan. No. no. Oh, okay, right, right, okay. <laughs> especially not the pedestals. I guess I, the, my favourite fan is the one that's going to sing along with us at, at, yeah. at shows, you know what I mean? Like, and that's something that's really encouraging and we, we encourage it, you know. But, um, yeah, it's funny. I mean, I, I went and saw all who are probably my favourite all-time band play at, uh, for the first time and um, the whole PA cut down and the lights went out and the whole crowd kept singing and the drummer kept playing and everything. It was just kind of a magical sort of moment, you know. It ended up coming back on again. I didn't even realise it happened today so, you know. I yeah, but I heard that the front of the house dropped out for like half a song. And half a song. Yeah. Yeah. Half. Yeah. I was trying to work out if you guys could tell or not or if you were just smashing it and it was like we, either I, way you smashed it it sounded great where we were, I was standing but I was right at the front of the stage so it sucks yeah, to be the yeah. people screaming and singing but also doesn't yeah true true yeah without the bottom end and everything it's not, yeah. it's not very exciting they come back in and like kind of slightly sharded yeah right <laughs> now um, with that apart from today of course what has been your biggest holy shit moment throughout your career can you think of one um, getting to play CBGB's in New York um, that was a big moment because it was a legendary punk rock venue where the Ramones were born and Blondie and Talking Heads and all that. And um, yeah, I mean, getting to do big tours with bands that are your, you know, you look up to and having Bill and Stefan from Descendants produce records, stuff yeah. like that, you know, touring Japan. There's a lot of little moments where you go, yeah, I'll remember that forever, you know. Yeah. yeah. A little stand back and kind of look around and go, hang on, where am I right now? Yeah, totally. Sometimes yeah. Yeah, you do do that, you know. Yeah, it's crazy. So... You've also recently announced a co-headlining tour with Gyroscope in September where you'll be celebrating 25 years of your classic album, No Touch Red. <laughs> yes, that's right. So tell us a bit more about that tour. Um, well, Gyroscope, I think they've got an album called Breed Obsession, which is fucking rad. And um, that's turning 15, so they're celebrating that as well. And we just thought, hey, we just did three shows with them in New South Wales about two months ago. Like, we did uh, Wollongong, um, Newcastle and Sydney, and it was cool. And so we thought, let's do it again and, you know, with the albums celebrating the anniversary, it just makes sense. Play all, the, play the whole album, and um, we've got vinyl of the album, and um, and then play whatever the crowd wants to hear. You know, so it always seems to work good. So, and they're just fucking amazing. I don't know if you've ever seen them play. Yeah, yeah, they they're go fucking off. incredible. You guys would be great together. I can imagine. Yeah, they are, and they are really underrated. Like yeah. people rate them, but I reckon they're probably. The best band out there. I I'm going to that show. Come on, you can. <laughs> so, as you mentioned, you're going to be playing that album in full on the tour. Like, is that an easy thing to do? Like, when you recorded it, I couldn't imagine you yeah, ever imagine no. one day you're going to play the whole lot. It's hard. We've we've done it with how it works and a couple couple albums actually, but it is hard. You got to go back to the jam. You got to make sure you're jamming a couple times a week, and like just keep going over it because it takes a while. It, you know, when you write a new song, you don't you're not really good at playing it for about half a year. You know, so you got to like. We can probably play five songs, but the other seven we're going to have to learn from learn from scratch again. Blow out so the think, cobwebs. Yeah. Blow out the cobwebs, yeah. yeah we'll, be, we'll be right. It's a really fast album. It's all over by about 35 minutes. You know? <laughs> Short so, set yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then we'll play whatever after that, you know. Cool. And speaking of albums, mate, like your last one, No Rituals, came out last February. So yeah. how far advanced are you on the next one? Uh, we've got about probably four or five demoed songs, but yeah, we haven't actually jammed or done any demos. Nah. We've been too busy doing shows. That and album stuff. was that good anyway. Like, why write oh, another thanks, one? Quick? Man. <laughs> thanks, man. Yeah, we are really proud of that album. Yeah. But um, yeah, we've definitely got a few. Tom, Tom's like been writing tons of stuff, so we'll probably you know learn a few of his songs. There. He's really good at making a song and doing a full demo yeah, of right. everything, you know, so you know exactly how it should sound. So yeah, we'll probably end up starting to do that soon. Work on the new stuff. Oh, all right, we're on to some um. Less serious questions now. We always chuck in a couple weird, like, trivia or fun ones and splice them together with all the other bands. 
Uh, first one off the bat, if you could bring back any trend from the 90s, whether it be clothing, stupid oh, yeah. stuff we said, what would it be and why? Probably wallet wallet chains because they were practical. Yeah. Especially you could the never lose your wallet if it was chained to your belt. Yeah, you could never get it stolen if it had barbed no. wire on it either. No, <laughs> True. and it was really hard to, even when you put it down, it's a big heavy thing with a chain on it. So yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. It's good. It's like every time you went to pull your wallet out, you dropped it, but then you didn't. Yeah. Oh, it's just hanging there. But yeah. All your cards fall out on the ground. Yeah. It's embarrassing. But look. It's all good as long yeah. as it's not a day gig and it's windy. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, what's another era you'd choose for a festival and who would be the headliner? An era? Did era. you say? Era. 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 Uh, for the headliner, I'd get, oh, I'd have to be like No Effects or Descendants or someone like that. Um, and it would be like late 90s. You know, like 97 this. to 99 <laughs> when it's just magical. There's a lot of good punk rock happening then, you know, maybe early 2000s, but yeah, around that time, you know, tons of good bands, you know. Yeah. We got the calculator out last night and we added up the amount of years all the bands on this bill have been going for. And we're going to see who comes the closest to guessing, like how many years. Oh, you yeah. Reckon? You see, you've already worked it out. I, I, with the calculator. Ah. It's too, too much for me to figure out by my fingers. Probably 200 <laughs> or 300? 256. Fuck. Okay. It's a, not lot bad, of years, eh? a lot of years of rocking there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a there's a certain chain with golden arches that has a burger that old that is still going and hasn't molded yet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, those things last forever. Yeah. So who, who out of all the bands on today's lineup you reckon will be the last band standing before they retire? Oh, that's a good question. Um Probably friends will rom. <laughs> yeah. They just gonna keep, keep going, going. eh? Yeah, they're, they're like energizer going batteries. For so, for so long and and they're still good, you know, so oh, good on them. Yeah, very yeah. cool. All right. Yeah, that's one more, Corey, and, and then we'll call it a day. One more? Time for one more? Yeah. All right. So think of all the classic festivals you've either played at or gone to. Which one would you revive out of the ones uh, that have died? There was the Somersault Festival, I think it was in, like, 98, and that was the best festival ever. It had um, Foo Fighters, Beastie Boys, Sonic Youth, Rancid, Jawbreaker, Beck, um, Beastie Boys. It was just fucking incredible. Yeah, that sounds like um, it's worth And it was, like, New Year's Eve in Sydney and uh, the showgrounds in Melbourne the day before. It was cool. It'll never happen again. It probably lost a lot of money, I think. It, <laughs> yeah. But it was just a magical lineup. Like, one, fuck, so good. One of those do or die. I think it even had like, die. yeah. <laughs> it had Rancid and, and, and Jawbreaker, which was yeah. r- ridiculous, you know, for punk rock. It was cool. Cool. Thank All you right. so much for your time. Yeah, and don't no forget worries. everyone Pleasure out going. there, the, uh, the tour is coming up in September. Where can people find out more information and get tickets? Uh, if you go to bodyjar.com, it's all the dates and you can buy tickets and stuff there. It's basically from the 1st of September to the 16th. Yeah. I think we're hitting all the states, so yeah. All right, Cam, thanks very much for your time, brother. Pleasure. Pleasure. Pleasure, guys. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you.